everyone, it's Imogen and welcome back to Colouring Kid. In today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about how I use fine liners in my colouring books. Now, I have already done a video just like this last June, I believe, during lockdown. Um, if you are new to fine liners or you haven't seen that video, I'd recommend watching that one before this one. Um, I will be touching on what I said in that video um, in this one but not in um, as much depth so I will link that in the description for you um, it mostly explains what fine liners I was using at that point um, examples of pictures and how I used them and a couple of demonstrations I think um, this one is going to be continuing from that basically because over the last year I have um, got a few more products um, I use them in more ways now now that i've been using them for a lot longer so hopefully this helps i did mention um a while ago in several videos that um i use them in different ways and have different techniques and would this be a video that you'd like to see um, you know around two of it and lots of people asked um and i have been using fine liners more and more um in my colorings recently so um yeah i'm basically just going to firstly show you the products that i have uh, secondly, um, how I use them um, and then give you examples of pages. And finally, I'm also going to be sharing a whip that I've got at the moment and how I um, am planning in my head to use the fine liners on that project. So firstly, what fine liners do I have? So I have quite a few now. Um, originally, I started with um just statler fine liners stadler however you prefer to say it i had a 20 set for school um i was kindly gifted by susan the six set of pastel stadler ones and also the eight set of stabilo ones i think um i don't have many of the stabilo ones in here at the moment um i tend to just keep my most used fine liners in this pot because it keeps them really handy and I'll explain why in a minute why they're mostly all light colours. So these are the Stabilo ones, these are 0.4 millimetres. Um, personally I find the Stadler ones a bit easier to use just because of the shape of them. Oh sorry, I shook the camera. Um, we also have the Stadler Triplis fine liners, I believe these are 0.3. Um, I find these a lot more um, comfortable to use um and also i now have the arteza um in conic fine liners so these are very much the same sort of thing except they come in a wide range of colors um sometime last uh yeah sometime last year stadler did actually come out with some new colors stabilo have come out with some recently which i haven't got yet um but if you're looking for the biggest range of colours, Arteza is your best bet. Um, 120 is the maximum amount, as I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, I actually managed to get them on a deal, so it's really good if you can hold out for a deal. Because I think I ended up getting these like 50, 60% off um, on a Cyber Monday deal. So yeah, these are 0 0.4. They have uh, numbers. Um, and these are what they look like. I haven't used them as much because they're newer to me. Um, but these are the Arteza. So I actually keep my set in a case because I find that a lot easier, just like I would with pencils. I don't have all of them in here at the moment because, as I said, I'm using them. Now, when I got my set, I swatched them all out and I will show you the swatch. Um, wherever my swatch book is. Um, and unfortunately, some of them were dry and the black one, I'll show you here, I'm not sure if I've replaced it, yeah. The black one had no actual nib in it. So I contacted Arteza and they very kindly sent me a um, replacement set free of charge, which is absolutely fantastic. I think only about eight of the pens were, were affected. I wasn't expecting them to send a whole new set. I was just going to ask if they could send those, um, those pens um, again. But they were very gracious and sent me um, another set for free. So I have a backup set. Now, these are all of the pens. I swatched them in the order they came in. And as you can see, the thing I love about this set is there's such a wide variety of pens. There aren't too many bright ones, which personally I love. The darker colours that they do have are really rich and perfect for um, techniques that I'm going to talk to you about. Uh, there's so many light colours as well. It 
unfortunately it was mainly these pinks that were the dry ones and i use those quite a lot there's some lovely purples um lots of these are actually lighter than the statler ones i have um so that's really good because the Stadler ones i keep going between statler and Stadler. apologies um these are quite light but because they're not in as big um, of a range of colors there's you know they could still be even lighter like some of these ones are um yeah a really good range this is one of my favorites it's like an elephant gray love it so there's pros and cons to every set you know like anything even with pencils but i personally think this is a really good set um there's also neons if you're uh, wanting that sort of thing but they're great so that's the swatch i will also show you how they come in the, the set as i said this is my backup one so I'm not sure how much they're actually meant to be. I, I think they're about 60, 70 pounds usually. I think I managed to get them for about 30, 30 must have been. Yeah, so this is how they come. They come in plastic trays, which is personally why for me, I decided to put them in their uh, case. They're absolutely lovely. I haven't actually swatched these to make sure that you know everything's all right with them one of them's missing because i used them for art but i think oh i actually have it here let me put it back whilst i'm at it um because i was using it for some writing for school but these are great and you could definitely leave them in the case if you wanted to that wouldn't be a problem um i like fine liners because they're not bulky and they're just so easy to you know store because they're basically the same thickness as um, a pencil so they are the Arteza Inconic fine liners would highly recommend those but as I said some of them aren't quite as juicy as the Stadler ones so if you're looking for higher quality but um, more minimal colours then Stadler's probably your best bet and um, then um, I will actually be showing these in my haul for August. I was gifted these by Sue, one of her colouring uh, friends, or one of her friends that tried colouring and um, didn't like it, um, sent these to Sue and she very kindly passed them on to me. So these are dual brush markers. Now, dual brush markers at first glance you wouldn't think are fine liners, but the end um, of, well, there's two ends to the um, markers. One of them is obviously the uh, brush pen and one is the fine liner. So again, I, I now have more fine liners and these work really well um, as well. Now, I have actually been using these purely just as, um, what are they called? Oh my gosh, brush markers for the time being. But I am planning on playing around with them, um, you know, how they can be used as fine liners. Now, these... Um, the swatches i am not sure where sue's friend got them from i'm presuming amazon but i can't find the exact ones on there so unfortunately um i'm not sure what the link is or um, anything for these but again there's lots of light colors with this um i really like the range of skin tones there are some gorgeous colors um you can if you apply the same techniques as i'm talking about with the fine liners you can also apply them to uh pens so felt tip pens brush pens like these um they work in the same way because they're basically the same thing you know hence the name fine liner it literally just means a finer tip so you can easily use brush markers in the same ways if you'd like to so they are the dual brush pens so these are a couple of other things i wanted to show you these aren't strictly fine liners but as I said, you can use them in the same way. I don't use these as much in my colouring um, because I like the fine liners uh, more, but they're great as well. So I have a few open stock Tombow markers. Again, they work in the same way. They have the brush tip and they have the finer tip. Um, you do have to be careful with this sort of thing. When you have a finer tipped felt tip, they tend to... Um, bleed uh in terms of if you go over um some of the pen that you've already put down they really do just soak into each other and kind of ruin the paper so they don't work quite as well i do have a faber castell pit pen again you can use that in the same way i have these um 
lovely brush sign pens uh, from Pentel. They're great as well. I have actually used the brown one in a picture in Worlds of Wonder. Now, marred liners, I, I've only got these recently, actually, because they're for school. But um, you can use them in the same way. I do want to test these out in my colouring, actually, because I think it would be quite interesting to see how they work and whether they ruin the paper or not. Um, now, I wouldn't... I wouldn't use the um, fine liner, not the fine liner, sorry, the highlighter side because they're a little bit harder to work with, just like a chisel tip in um, on your markers. But this finer tip could possibly work really well. They're a bit softer than your ordinary felt tips. So it's just to give you some ideas of other products that can be substituted for fine liners if you don't have um a big range of them or you don't have any at all um and you're looking to get some okay so i just um got my notes here for some things because there's quite a lot to tell you so the two ways i talked about using fine liners in my first video was using them as a base and then putting pencil over the top now um as i said um in that video if you're treating fine liners in that way you have to think of them like a marker so if you're doing a marker base and pencil over the top you obviously don't want the marker to be too dark otherwise you can't then add shadow with pencil so that's what you've got to think if you're using fine liners as a base use a light color so that's why i love all of these light colors because they work so well as a base you can then just go over with whatever color you want um, as long as it's a, a, a shade darker whereas if you go in with a really dark color I don't know say you do go in with a black you're not going to be able to shade on the black unless you're doing white or something like that for highlights um, but yeah that's the number one thing with uh, using fine liners as a base um, or I use fine liners normally um, where you fill in small details as I said that's you know hence the name a fine liner um i will just say if you do do that i mean with any fine liners some do fade over time especially this um purple satin one for me i found has faded uh don't really know why um it just does that so just bear that in mind but yeah i do tend to use them just for small details to quickly fill them in um, and if they're really small details, I then don't feel the need to shade with pencil. So they're the two ways I mainly talked about um, in my last video. I love fine liners because once you've put the pencil on top, you don't really notice that they have been there. It just looks like a pencil base. Um, they are quicker. The process is definitely a, a lot quicker. Um, it also is kind of a mixed media-ish type um, page. And especially for me, seeing as I don't use paints and stuff in my um, pictures, it's kind of nice, you know, using a few different mediums. Uh, and also I find it really relaxing using fine liners because... You know, it's just that process of putting pen to paper. It's obviously very different to pencil. So um, one thing I will say before I show the examples is that um, if you're putting pencil on top of your fine liner, make sure that your fine liner is dry. So I've found before that if you don't let them dry enough, the pencil won't overlay properly um, because it hasn't fully dried on the surface of the paper yet. Um, also, I've found on most papers, putting fine liner as a base takes away some of the tooth of the paper. You can't do as many layers on top of fine liner as you can without it. I don't really know why that's the case, but that's just what I found. So I wanted to let you know. OK, so on to some examples, uh, new examples of how I've used fine liner that I want to share with you. So this is kind of the new um, the new techniques that I um, do. So I put detail on top of pencil with my fine liners. Now I'm going to show you an example um, on my turtle that I did in Circle of Life, if I can find it. Um, it's always quite a hard page to find. Here we go. So uh, I'm not sure if you can see here, but on these little seaweed bits, I have put lines and dots um, of fine liner on top of my pencil. And I found that works really well. Even if it's a waxy pencil, they still seem to work for me. You just have to let them dry. And then, uh, this is really fun. So, I grabbed a few... Oh, sorry, that's out of focus. I grabbed a few 
um, browns, uh, lighter browns and greens and did kind of a scumbling effect on the turtle on top of the pencil um, just to create an effect really that it looked a bit more kind of like rugged crackly skin kind of um, and yeah that was straight over the pencil it worked really well you can still I mean from far away it doesn't look noticeable which is good because it blends in but close up you can see all the individual markings which I personally really like and I'm really happy with that new technique that uh, I've done so that is one way I'll show you a few more examples so flowerscape I did the exact same thing on my lilies um not sure if you can see so I grabbed two Arteza fine liners and added my own dots kind of like a pointillism effect onto the lily it's especially noticeable here where I've done the small dots there and the thing I love about pointillism and adding um things like that is that it adds depth and shadow without you actually having to shade so um you know if you do closer um like dots and stuff it looks darker um, and that was over the pencil so I literally just um, saw where I'd put shadow naturally from the reference image onto the lily and then thought well I'll just add a few more dots there to um, accentuate it and as you can see I'm rubbing it obviously it's had time to dry so it doesn't rub off even though it is a water-based medium so that I've also added on top of the pencil and uh, one more uh, here I did the tiniest bit on here on her hair uh, this is from I Believe in Fairies by Clara Markova after I'd done the pencil I grabbed a really light um, fine liner and added extra little streaks to her hair to kind of add more volume to it and I was really pleased with how that turned out so that is again oh sorry I keep shaking the camera that is again over the um, pencil Okay, so another way that I use them is detail behind the pencil. Now, this is something that I've only just started doing. Um, I'm planning on trying to do it a little bit more. This is Mythographic Dream Garden. So let me just put these down. And I've just completed a page in this. You will see this on my completed pages video as well. And I'll talk about it in more depth. This one... Um, what I did for the trees, and if you want to actually see it uh, I think it's in my Devon vlog um, basically I did a kind of similar to the turtle a scumbling effect on all of the trees with the the shadow so I did little like swirly circles with two different greens and then I did the pencil over the top now the actual scumbling effect isn't noticeable but what is noticeable is the the brighter areas of green so if I just hold that up so all of these like brighter areas are the fine liner and if I hadn't used a blending pen so I used a don't blending pen it wouldn't have shown up but basically what I did is the if you put the blending pen down it doesn't move the fine liner the fine liner stays where it is it does however move the pencil so all it did was kind of made um made the fine liner a bit more noticeable and brighter which I really liked so although the texture isn't noticeable for me the colour is still there and I love the little bits of bright green that come through so that's one way I do need to experiment with that a bit more I mean you never know I might do a, another one of these videos next year to see if I do anything different um, so yeah detail behind pencil and the final thing that I do is uh, colour over with white gel pen no sorry I colour um, over white gel pen with fine liners and also I use fine liners to just add depth in general so there is something actually on this dream garden page um, I took some of the hidden objects out of this page because there were some that just kind of didn't make sense on the page and I just wanted to take them out so there was a bulldog clip uh, chili pepper, scissors, a question mark. There were certain things that I just thought, yeah, I'm going to take it out. And I covered them in white gel pen, white ink, um, 
and then I went over with fine liner and that helped just to mask it even more um, and kind of blend it in with everything else. It's still not perfect. If you look closely, you can still see the hidden objects are there, but it doesn't bother me that much. Um, so I just grabbed a fine liner darker than the pencil that I'd used because when you put the fine liner over the ink or the white gel pen, it's going to show up lighter anyway, so you need a darker one. And it worked quite well, and I just did several layers, let it dry, um, and that seemed to work quite well in terms of the detailing that I did. So that's one trick, I guess, to kind of hide your hidden objects a bit more. And you can do that anyway, you know, if you outline things in white gel pen, but want to give the white gel pen a bit of colour to it, like a tint of another colour, you can add the fine liner on top. But again, just make sure that the white gel pen's dry because you don't want to ruin the nibs of the fine liners. Um, and yes, so in my page that I did in Mythographic Imagine, I also added depth with my fine liners. So I added depth by um, adding darker lines of fine liner once I'd done a base of fine liner, added my Posca, my white gel my white gel pen, I wanted to go in with it. I did a pointillism effect on top of the pencil here to add depth and make it look like there was a shadow. Um, there was definitely something else I was going to point out. Oh yeah, the flowers. So I had coloured the flowers, outlined them in Posca, put the white gel pen on, and then I went in with a fine liner to just add more lines. Um, and again, add some more depth. So that's another example of putting the uh, fine liner over the pencil and if you have burnished the pencil at first it may seem like it's a really slippery surface and it's hard to to do but if you just let it dry um, it works and I really like the effect so they are the different techniques that I use my fine liners for now um, so now I'm going to show you a whip that I'm working on and how I plan to use fine liner in it so this is Meine Reise der Europa. Um, this is by Rita Berman. It translates to My Journey Through Europe. And I've just started a page in this gorgeous book. I love it. So this is the background that I'm working on at the moment. I decided to go for this page because um, it's one of the London pages and it just um, was one that stuck out and I wanted to do and it shouldn't take too long. Um, I am planning to mostly use pencil with this but there are some areas where I'm pretty sure I'm going to use fine liner so definitely all of these thinner lines on the Union Jack I will definitely be using um, a lighter fine liner and then going over with shading possibly on some of the borders here on the stamps um, the heart there maybe um, definitely some of the details I'm going to make this look like Liberty so some of the details here with a grey maybe um, or a light purple and then going over with shadow colours so there are many ways you can use the fine liners I may even colour the bus and then feel like it needs a bit more shadow and just outline some of the areas in the, the fine liner to add a bit more depth so um, yeah I hope that helps um, maybe even for the border there. That's kind of just my thought process. I tend to use fine liners in most of my pages, so it's just how I incorporate them that slightly changes each time. So that is everything. Um, I hope that you found this video useful in some way. Um, and as I said, if you haven't watched the first fine liner video, it will be down in the description below so that you can go and see it, preferably first before this one because this is kind of a follow-on from that video. So, um, yeah, thank you so much for your support, as always. Um, thank you for uh, wanting me to do this video, because um, it was really fun to do. And, uh, yeah, I will see you all in my next video. Take care, everyone. Bye!